What up, what up, what up, what up? Hi. You tune in to the Jose Morales podcast where we talk sports, business, and everything in between. I am your host, Jose Morales, and we're at my boxing academy. Joining me in the ring today is Missy, Missy, Missy. Melissa Burks, but we go by Missy. Say what's up, Missy. What's up? So, Missy, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about personal training, gyms, um, just fitness, the fitness world, how to be successful in it, and also get into Missy's background and the whole nine yards. Uh, actually, Missy's been coming here now. How many years? It's been years now, huh? I was just trying to figure that out the other day. I think it's been three years. Three 2017. Years? And we're pretty goddamn quick. Yeah. Did you take a break? Yeah, because my um, I had surgery. Yeah, so you yeah. did take a break, right? So I took a, I had to take like um, almost a year off. I took ten months off and then okay, slowly came back. Okay, because I'm like, God damn, why does that feel like? I know. Damn, three years. Yeah. Shit, that is a long time. So Missy, uh, been boxing here for three years. That's when I first met you. What got you to want to come to boxing? You know, honestly, I've been into fitness my whole life or working out, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, just being active. And I wanted something different. I wanted something to push myself. And I'd always been interested in boxing. And I had been on a bucket list thing for me to try and learn. And I knew there was more to it than just throwing punches. I mean, I can throw a punch. I know that. But I wanted to learn the basics and kind of challenge myself with the workout and step outside my comfort zone. I yeah. didn't know anybody that boxed. I didn't know anybody that came here. And I just wanted to kind of meet new people and just surround myself with like-minded individuals. Yeah. How'd you find out about us? Groupon. <laughs> oh, and what, uh, did you play any sports prior to this? Yeah, I played basketball, uh, I mean, for my whole life. Okay. Yeah, I actually played throughout high school. I played in middle school. I pl played since I was five years old. Yeah. I remember one time you said something about, uh, you said even, oh, I think I saw it on your Instagram and it drew my, it caught my attention because it's very true. You said... Even personal trainers need trainers. Agreed. And uh, and when you when I saw that, because you were you're a personal trainer, mm -hmm. um, you've been how long you've been doing that? Um, I think I was trying to figure that out too the other day. I think I started in 2016 training people online, uh -huh. and then I started my boot camp at that same time. So yeah, I would say about four years now. Okay, how did you how did you get into that what drew your interest to do that or what personal training what, why did you want to do that I mean for me I kind of went through this like physical and emotional transformation um the past like since 2011 so my father died in 2011 and it was such a long process for me and I dealt with it in unhealthy ways that I was trying to find something uh to basically deal with it a healthy way um, and I always tell people fitness saved me yeah I kid you not and so when I found what it did for me, not only uh, physically, you know, looks wise, obviously that's a lot of times how people want to get into fitness. They want to look different, but what it did for me mentally was even more important and continues to do for me. Yeah. And I wanted to share that knowledge and that passion and drive that I had with other people. Yeah. So you were super close to your dad. I was, and then yeah. when that happened, mm -hmm. it just crushed you. 100%. And then that's when you found your, your something to keep you yeah sane from going insane. absolutely well and it took me it was a long road i don't think i really started working out until like 2013 because you went to um after high school you went to college also yeah mm -hmm. and then because you your career you are you work uh you're in the law enforcement i am yes that's my full-time job yeah and mm -hmm. you, and actually missy and i she actually helped me uh do outreaches locally where we we do connect and go talk with youth troubled youth and all that which i love doing by i the way. do too yeah. well yeah and my job ties me in with youth you know my whole what, what i do is i work with at-risk youth so it's really cool to be able to do stuff like that yeah. and incorporate oh. fitness too and share that with them like there's other mm -hmm. ways to deal with things yeah super cool mm -hmm. I, and thank you for that I, I got to go to do the Folsom prison trips with the kids and all that take some of my troubled kids along with those it was great and and that was something so that cool. you that was a door that you opened for me and I thank you for that part. I love that um so you got into fitness you got uh 2013 you started training people why did you say that comment on uh on social media that even trainers need trainers what made you say that well I mean I can work out on my own I know exactly what to do yeah but it's just doing it sometimes. Sometimes you need that extra push. And sometimes I've never actually had in my own personal trainer, I'd say probably I've had coaches. Um, I've had people close to, I would consider, you know, like you're my coach. I'm always like my coach, Jose, oh, coach David, you know, talking about everybody. Um, and then, but I think 
the coach makes all the difference or the trainer. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you know, a trainer that needs a trainer basically is just an extra push Yeah, to kind of dig deep. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's not that you need them because you don't know what you're doing. You need them because it's that extra push. And then sometimes too, I feel like I'm designing so many workouts. Not that I, you know, obviously I love to design the workouts and I kind of get creative, but sometimes I don't want to think sometimes Mm. like after work, when I come in here and I box, it's to take my mind off everything. I don't, don't want to have to think about what's my next exercise. What am I doing now? I want to just be told what to do and pushed and be like, wow, that was great. Yeah. Yep. Did you ever feel like, um, oh, am I going to step on toes if I'm there and I'm doing this? Or or like, oh, I wonder if they're going to get offense to it that I'm a personal trainer and I'm doing that. Have you ever, did you ever yeah, feel that way? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I did. I felt like maybe people would think like, oh, why is she, you know, why does she need a coach or why does she need mm-hmm. a trainer or whatever? If she's a personal trainer, is she not adequate enough? Maybe. Cause, yeah. Cause I, th- or does I, she not know what she's doing. You yeah, know, I personally myself done that also where I'm like, man, how are people going to feel if they see me, uh, at so-and-so gym or if they see me doing this or if that trainer's at my gym, how's that going to look? You right. Know what I mean? And I think, I think a lot of people do do that where they're like, Oh, I don't want no other trainers here. You know what I mean? This, or they're going to try to copy me or they're going to try to, you know what I'm saying? I agree. I think it's just an insecurity though. It for is people. insecurity. I'm like, exactly. I actually learn a lot from you guys, you yeah. know, and I've, I've never closed my mind off to anything. I love to learn. Mm-hmm. And the fact that I've been able to even sh- incorporate boxing with some of my clients is because of you guys. Yeah. Like you guys taught me that. I had no idea how to box. I yep. mean, I could punch, but that's way different than boxing. Yeah. I've been around places that I like that, that they don't want anyone else that is as insecurity to do anything like that. I think that's so weird. It's and just it's, such a closed off mindset. It is very closed off. I actually love seeing you teach boxing. Like I saw a video of you teaching a guy this week on your story. Yeah. I just, and one, that's one of my best friends. He, uh, he's been wanting to train with me for a while and, um, and I, I finally sh- took him on. Yeah. And I saw you teaching him how to throw the right hand and all this. And I was like, I, sh- I remember talking to my wife and I was like, Check out Missy. She's doing it all right and everything. I'm like, damn. Yeah. And think about that. I didn't even know how to, I didn't know, like there's, you know, I I told him about the one through 10 of the, you know, the actual number of punches. And he's like, wait, there's 10 different punches. And I was like, yeah, like there's 10 different. And we only focused on the one and the two. And he's like, that's it. I'm like, yeah, I don't even want your wraps on. I don't want your gloves on. He's like, what? We're not in the bag. You know, it's like, there's so much to it that people don't understand, but it's really cool. I appreciate the sport like a lot. I have such a higher level of appreciation for it now after, um, doing it. And I'm constantly learning, yeah. like even through our, the zoom classes that you guys are teaching, I was a little skeptical, but I was, now that we're doing it, I love it. And I'm still learning. Like I'm learning new things via zoom. <laughs> yeah. So crazy. I, I'll be real. I was skeptical as fuck on it because <laughs> I didn't, I told myself do what I do a zoom class. Like me personally, what I do a zoom class. No, I would not. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even do a video home video. That's just me though. So I was looking at it that way because then I'm thinking to myself, boxing, how many boxing people are going to really want to do that? And that's why I didn't do it at the beginning. And then when it started dragging, 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 this whole coronavirus dragging, I'm like, fuck, I got to do something yeah. to do bring some sort of income. Otherwise, I'm going to be fucked. You know what I mean? Totally. Because it's obviously not going to be a month long of us being closed. So I'm like, all right, I got to figure this out. And I started doing it after the very first day of doing it, changed my whole mindset. Right? Isn't I it loved crazy? It. I loved it because it made me feel good. It's just seeing everybody made me feel good. Uh, and then the biggest part of boxing, like I told Ricky today, the biggest part of boxing is shadow boxing. Yes. Like, to get better boxing is shadow boxing. It's not hitting the heavy bag. Besides sparring and competing, that's probably the biggest thing. But if you want to get better with your form and the way you're, what you're doing is shadow boxing. People are now being forced to shadow box because there's no heavy bag, no nothing. Oh, yeah. And they're learning Mm -hmm. and they're getting better for me and we're still getting a good workout. I agree. So it was, it's, I love it. I mean, I've been doing it now, I think two weeks, two It's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank you for doing them too, Missy. I really enjoy them. I appreciate you jumping on there and doing them. I enjoy them. I do them every day if my schedule allowed. (laughs) Yeah. And I actually been seeing you been doing your clients Mm -hmm. via virtual training. I have. It's been such a switch, you know, like I have 
I offered, I didn't know what to do either with my clients because they pay in packages, you know, so they Mm. already prepay their sessions. And so I kind of gave them two choices. I said, I'm going to move, you know, I adjusted their sessions. For example, they had hour sessions remaining, let's say two one hour sessions. I broke it up into 30 minute virtual training sessions. So that way it seems like they're kind of getting more. And instead of training with me once a week, they can train with me twice a week for 30 minutes via virtual. And a lot, a lot of clients were skeptical at first, like most people. And it's funny, I have some clients that I don't know if they'll go back to in-person training because they're enjoying it so much. They can do it with their kids at home. They yeah. don't have to travel. They need, you know, it's still challenging them. It's like, I have clients that tell me, I didn't know I could actually work out and have such a good workout in 30 minutes. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's really true. cool. It's different, but it's cool. It is very different, but it is good. I, I agree. I had a people tell me that too. Like, damn, I don't know I could do all that from home. I'm literally in my right? living room. I know. Yeah. So it's super cool. We have a, uh, my 10 trains with you. Yes. My, my, mm-hmm. my I ten. love her. She has she, become not only a client, but like a good friend. Good. She's amazing. She is amazing. She she's, is. I was just talking. She's so happy. Right. She's, I was just talking to my boyfriend about her. I hope she listens to this, but, um, because I was like, you know what? I love her because she's so open-minded. She's one of those women that I love to surround myself with that, you know, doesn't, um, feel like she has to compete with other women or people. She just does her own thing and she lives life unapologetically. Yeah. She's fierce. She's honest. She's kind. She's just a good person she is i i, I, agree I with love surrounding myself said. with her everything you just said i agree 100 percent. you met her you met her here no she actually um she found my gym that i train of train out of fit and functional uh-huh. um she found that i think online somehow she was searching for personal trainers in the sacramento area close to where she lives and works which is downtown and um we're located off exposition so it was pretty close to her and um my the owner of the gym uh said hey i have this girl that inquired to train with me one i'm pretty full two she wants to do some boxing training and three i think you guys would be a really good fit personality wise and i said let's do it and so i took her on as as a client um i mean i think i've been training her for over six months now probably closer to eight, eight or nine months and it's been awesome yeah yeah, she also does private. I don't think she does classes here. She just does privates with Nacho. Yes. Mm-hmm. With Nacho. Yep. And I think her and Nacho know each other from work or something. Or I have no idea. I think they see each other. I don't know exactly. I think they run into each other like in the downtown area and they see each other or something. something but like, like how that. cool is that? We like share a client. Yeah. And that, like there's no, like that's what I love about you guys. It's not about competition. Like it's about everybody. Like we're all on the same team. Exactly. And that's what I, that was probably one of the biggest thing I wanted to make sure I talk about. Because I think, especially in our industry and especially during this time, it'd be amazing if gyms right now really try to stick with, you know, even when everything goes back to normal, like really help each other out, always connect with each other. Network, I agree. As, versus, because I feel like there's a lot of competition. Especially in the fitness industry, I feel Hell like there is. Yeah. And there's a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. Like, I was just ta- talking to my mom about that. I posted this picture on Instagram yesterday, and I did this, like, you know, caption about, oh, love yourself or whatever, <laughs> you know. And I there was, the whole point of it was there was a picture of me with, like, cellulite, and I wasn't going to post it. And my little sister kind of basically told me, like, why? You know, that's you. You try to be real and authentic. Like, that's you. That's something that you can't fix. Like, who cares? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Like, I'm going to post the picture. Like, you only live once. And, you know, I feel like maybe some of that reasoning in my head is not only, you know, societal pressure, but also the fitness industry. You know, you have this pressure to be almost perfect, especially as a trainer. You know, oh, wow, if I have cellulite, maybe I'm not an adequate Mm -hmm. trainer. Maybe, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Of course, I know what I feel. Of course, I'm confident in my abilities. But, you know, you start kind of like self-doubt a little bit so yeah. and me and my mom were actually talking about that this morning you know she was like i did your boot camp my virtual boot camp <laughs> that i'm doing and she said you look really fit you know i just wanted to let you know like i'm really proud of you I'm like That's thank you right. yeah that is cool i agree um you, we there is definitely a lot of pressure as as far as how you look mm-hmm. how you act how you carry yourself and and you get judged very quickly by oh yeah whatever other things so hopefully during this time we can everyone can see that and we can all stick together because my plan actually I, I wanted to have a lot of local small business uh gyms and stuff like that and i want to bring them on and talk about their gym that's really the cool well everyone has a story like their yeah, why you know exactly and that's what we're going to get to i want to get to missy's why <laughs> what's missy's why 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 give t- tell me about missy because oh, i don't gosh. even think i know i don't all know. I know i'm gonna share this real quick <laughs> can i share this share whatever you want Missy's first, I think it was at the beginning when she started boxing. I'm like, you got to have rhythm. I'm like, you dance? 
And Missy's like, <laughs> dance. She's like, I don't know how to dance. She's like, but I can twerk. <laughs> I'm like, Hold up, Missy. I said, dance. Twerk is not. We don't need that for boxing right now. You need. You need oh boxing. my gosh, that's Fucking awesome. Missy is hilarious. <laughs> I, I still don't have rhythm when we tell you and yeah. I probably can't twerk because I've lost weight but it's nah, okay <laughs> no but you you your boxing's got a whole lot better like I told you I told I even told David um I think it was right before the right before the whole corona thing you were in the gym I'm like damn bro Missy's looking good thank you because I remember the very first video we did I don't know if you remember for social media, I think. Oh, it was terrible. Had, when you had first started, I still remember? have. Yeah, I, I might. I might still have it on my Instagram. It's like bad. Like you guys had to move the camera around yeah, because we, I couldn't move my. Remember, feet. we only <laughs> videotaped you up because we didn't want her feet to show. Because we're like, damn, her feet looks fucked up. It was like, and it's so funny and, watching those videos back. There's one of me even hit, hitting like the the heavy bag, and I'm like, what am I doing? I thought I was so cool, you know. But it's cool. It's like I'm glad I took those it, videos. That's progress. Yes, yeah. because you can see it now. Because I think boxing, like as far as like like with fitness you can see it in your body mm -hmm. but boxing you're not going to be you feel like like me i've even told myself that i'm like i feel like i've always been like this mm -hmm. like, I'm like i was born to shit what do you mm -hmm. mean i was always good at boxing no i wasn't no, yeah mm -hmm. it's things that i got better with time and i think videos help like agreed video, but video. you're right that video was bad <laughs> yeah so when i saw you right before we closed and i told david i think i was standing like right there and you were shadow boxing in that corner and i told david i was like damn bro missy looks hella better boxing thank you For real. that makes and me feel good i did i told her i'm like i can't believe like her progress is night and day it's like not the same well, i love to challenge all. myself and to learn something brand new, to learn a sport as an adult brand new it's like such a challenge you know mm. but i love that i i always want to challenge myself and seriously i'm the way I feel about boxing is the way I felt about basketball, like, or I love, I love to snowboard. I, you know, there's a few sports I love and it's just like when I'm doing it, I don't think of anything else. Yeah. Like it's an outlet you for me. It. It's such a healthy outlet after like a bad day of work or something. That's why I come here straight from work, you know? Yeah. That's cool. Damn. Yeah. You did change big time. <laughs> well, what, another thing I, I kind of want to bring up, um, when we were talking about the whole, uh, insecurity of between trainers and all that i kind of wanted to share that i feel like when other people are teaching boxing i i think it's even better because it's a possibility that people i think gyms see it as oh they're teaching boxing like they're taking my potential customers away from me but really it may even bring you more potential customers. Because, Absolutely. You know what I mean? No, I, totally. Because everyone asks where I box. You yes, know, where I did think I that's, learn? That's the part that people are not seeing. People are seeing like, oh, you're taking a client away from me versus no. Yeah. You don't really know that it could be bigger than and, that. And think about it this way too. At least I know you and I probably share the same mindset. It's like, okay, boxing you know to me i didn't hear a lot about it it was always the mma and like the mm -hmm. ufc stuff and like you know actual boxing for me i think it's like starting to make a comeback it's becoming um i don't want to say it's like cool or fad or anything but like people are starting to enjoy yeah. it again uh, yes they are it and is. to like spread that trending. and to teach those skills so think about it. i'm teaching a couple of my clients what i've learned and who could they show down the line yep. their kids whoever like think about that, like the amount of people that will connect from yep. that and that's exactly how I try to teach the classes. Like I teach the classes. We do midday where you learn how to hold mitts. I correctly. love that day. We do all these Fridays. things. Where, yeah, because we're trying to teach people to do it correctly so that they can teach somebody. You know exactly. What I mean? it's, it's more than just coming in and, and it helps out. you learn a ton too. Yep, very true. And the same thing, vice versa, with with going to a trainer and mm -hmm. learning exercises or things that you can install exactly in your, in whatever you're doing. It's just like so a, it's a win-win. Just, just a different you just way. Change your mentality. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. so get back to the missy's why i want to and you didn't tell me your why like give me your history give me your story oh give gosh. me what what <laughs> how did missy become because you're young man your birthday just is your birthday tomorrow weekend. yes mm -hmm. tomorrow's your birthday happy bur Thank early you. birthday yeah so your birthday's tomorrow you're very young i don't you're, feel very young you're but young you're yeah. young girl you're young you're, I, I don't mind gonna say your age because girls don't like saying it but if you want to say it, you can say it but <laughs> you're young yeah. You're doing, you, you have a good career. You're doing it with the personal training. You look amazing. You're Thank training you. well. I mean, you're a good person all around. Thank you. You're on your shit. How did you get to that? And then you're going so much more places. How, tell me, what is your, what was your fuel 
in your tank to get you going every day? What was it? What You know, was- honestly, I've always been extremely driven. I've always been super independent and I've always kind of been a big goal setter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never do it for anybody else but myself. And maybe that's a little bit selfish, but I've learned to kind of like really take care of myself, you know, and have my own back and not like rely on anybody. But I don't know. I think honestly, I really think a lot of it had to do with my dad dying. So like my dad, he died anyways. So I was, I moved out young. I moved out at, I think, I think I was 18, 19. Um, my parents were divorced and they'd been divorced since I was like a, you know, like two or three years old. So that was cool. I used to go back and forth mom and dad's house. And my mom remarried when I was like eight. I love my stepdad. He's amazing. And, um, you know, I moved out young, just typical kid stuff. I was like, I'm going to get my own place. Oh, I don't want to be home by curfew, you know, kind of yeah. just a little bit like that. I mean, I was always a good kid. Like I didn't really, That's typical you know, at that age though. yeah. And I did. And guess what? I never moved back home. I was so stubborn and hard headed that I was like, Oh, I'll make this work. I don't care how, but I'm going to make it work. And then shortly after I moved out, my dad passed away and it was, um, it's weird for me. Cause this is the first time I've ever like publicly talked about it. Mm. Um, cause I'm still going through some of the process. He was actually murdered, um, in 2011. So oh, that's shit. kind of what got me to law enforcement. Like it, if that makes sense. And Hell then yeah, it makes sense. And then tying it all together, personal training really, because fitness saved me with all that. And then, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. Actually, even just connecting the dots right now, it's crazy. Wow. You know, that's fucking insane. It is. And like, you know, that's not a story I like. I, I was just, it was funny. I was kind of telling my boyfriend this the other day. I was like, it's not something I like tell a lot of people. And he's like, but why? And I'm like, it's almost, I used to think of it as embarrassing. Yeah. And I don't know why, because that's, I, I, you know, I, I know exactly what you feel like. I didn't have that happen to me, mm-hmm. but I felt the same way with my status in my life for a long yeah, period. Yeah, like your story. Yeah. For a mm-hmm. long period, I didn't want to share my story. I didn't want to tell anybody that until my very first podcast that I was on was the very first time that I actually shared all these things publicly. My family knew that about me, but yeah. publicly. And after I did that, it made a big 360 change in my life where I started connecting with so many people that were dealing with that, but they were feeling the same way, ashamed, embarrassed. And just they don't talk about and it. And they don't talk about it. But now they knew that I dealt with it. I've had That's all true. these people reach out to me and talk to me about it which I would have never had if I never shared it. And That's I made, so true. You know what I mean? And I mm-hmm. made it, and, and, and I feel like I made an impact in their life in a positive way because now they had someone to talk about. Someone yeah. Someone to talk to that about. That's true. And, um, and then plus also business wise, it helped big time because now they connect with you that much more. Now well, they, they know, know your story. They like know you your said. Story, yeah. Yeah. So, and like, not honestly only like close friends and family know that like not even there's like a few coworkers of mine that like know that. And the only reason truly they know is because I'm actually going through the court process still with his, uh, the person that actually murdered him. Mm. So it's like an ongoing thing. So for me, you may not even know this, but, um, about three months ago, I, I actually had a court hearing where I saw the per- the guy who actually killed him. He was, um, I mean, I guess I can tell the story basically, but the guy that actually killed him and, uh, you know, it'd been years since I'd seen him because he was actually sentenced to prison in 2013. And so it'd been years, all the new laws are coming up. So he's having, he's actually having a retrial. It's actually horrible. (laughs) Um, so I've been going through that process. And so I had a court hearing and how I used to deal with things before is I'd probably come home and crack a beer, you know, when I was younger, or I would, you know, just be stupid and destructive, just young. And, um, this time I said, you know what, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't feel like drinking. It's the middle of the day. It was like two o'clock. I took the day off from work to go to the court hearing. And I said, you know, what? I'm going to go to boxing. And I came here and I went to boxing and I felt so good after. And it was like, it is weird talking about it. Cause it like connects all the dots. Now it's really cool because you know, my law enforcement job, I wouldn't be in that if it wasn't for all this, it sparked an interest for me, you know, to help people. And like, what's crazy is, you know, to help at risk people that, you know, could Dealt potentially, yeah. I mean, I have people that I have supervised that, you know, have, have really hurt people. So it hits a little close to home sometimes. Sometimes I have to like figure out how to separate that. But I have to remind myself like my why, you know, I'm doing this because like I want to impact people and help people. And like, you know, after going through the court process and just the whole, the ups and downs and, you know, the news and all sorts of stuff. And, the, you know, cause you know, like news was involved and stuff like that. Um, it's just, you know, it's cool to be able to share. Not only can you go through something like that, but you can come out even stronger. Hell yeah. 
you know and i always yeah. tell people even the people i supervise and i i tell this to kids i have a 15 year old sister i'm like you can't control what happens to you like you know there's no way i could have stopped that or controlled that but you can control how you respond and react and yeah. you have choices and that's really what it comes down to in life you know are you going to sit and are you going to curl on a ball and let this affect you the rest of your life or are you going to you know slowly rise up and power through and get you know and be stronger and face your new normal yeah Damn, I you know? did not know that. You hit me with a curveball right now. <laughs> I know. I don't, I mean, and that's, to be honest, I always say like, I'm, I'm an onion. I got layers. <laughs> yeah. Shit, that's deep, man. I, I mean, in the way it really did, I mean, you could tell that was your wife because mm -hmm. it put everything together of who Missy is today. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I wouldn't be doing either of those things if that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I recently too, I recently found God, like that's new in my life and that's not something that... That's been a process too. And it's, and I'm not saying that everything happens for a reason because I don't think there's any reason my father should have been murdered. But I do think that things align. And even though God can't control, you know, because I questioned for so long, like, did, why would God let, you know, I was so angry. Why, if there's a God, why would God let this happen to my dad? Like, there's no reason behind that. And, you know, I, I realized now that God didn't let that happen. There's certain things that, you know, he can't control evil like that. And that is pure evil to take someone's life, you know, but all the things that have happened after that wouldn't have, wouldn't be occurring. I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you if, mm -hmm. you know, none of that happened. Like, to be honest, I was, you know, I was being a young, dumb kid when that happened and then my life totally flipped. And of course, I think I went like I went to like my all time low at a certain point, and then you know I pulled myself back up, and that's always a choice, you know. Wow, that's insane. That's crazy. It I'm, is. I'm like, I'm you caught me, man. I'm like, what <laughs> the hell. Well, it's crazy to me because I've never like publicly talked about it, you know. Like I actually I go to a support group. I go to like a homicide support group, and that's new. I actually started going to that last year. Mm. When I um, knew that his court process was going to be coming back up because my way of dealing with my dad's death, to be real, was not dealing with it. Yeah. It's just it. ignoring it. That's how I used to deal with a lot of things. Kind of just push it down, push it down. And then are, if you do that, it's going to slowly creep back up into your life. Are you the you say you have a 15 year old sister? Is mm -hmm. that uh, his daughter, too? Or no? no, that's like so, so technically that's from your mom's yeah, marriage, right? Correct. Yeah. So do you have any other siblings? From I did. Yeah. So me, I have an older sister who's 30. We're 10 years different. So she's 37 or 38. Okay. And that's from your father also? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how did did it affect her? It did, you know, um, and we're, me and her are really close. She has like three kids. And so she had young, young kids at the time. So she, me, me and my father, and she'll admit this, we're always way closer. We have very similar personalities. And, and sometimes <laughs> some, he was crazy, man, <laughs> crazy. And so some of the personalities that I traits that I see, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm my, I'm my father. <laughs> like yeah. that's scary sometimes. But um. She was, uh, she, she and my father were close, but not like me, me and him. Yeah, so you two were. I think it has affected her in, um, different than me because I think she has a harder time talking about it. Like we don't, it's like almost uncharted territory. We actually just went through the last of his stuff like last weekend or two weekends ago. It, we kind of just put it in her garage. Like, I mean, it was like little stuff, you know, we got yeah. rid of all the like important stuff and, and we just kind of pushed it down for literally, you know, he died in 2011. So for nine years, We've had this stuff in a garage and we decided to deal with it together. And it was fine, actually. It was like really, it was actually kind of fun doing it. But um, yeah, I think she handles it a little bit differently. Like, I don't think she talks about it a lot. Yeah. At least not to me, which is interesting. You know, it, mm. all of our family is kind of like that. Like my uncles, like they don't talk about it. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of odd. Something not to bring up. Bring yeah. Up. It's like, you don't know what to say. Like, cause everyone handles it differently. Cause you know, I remember when it occurred, people are always like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, like. I'm not, <laughs> I don't know how to respond to that. I'm, I'm not okay. But you know, you have to carry on. Like you have to pay bills. You have to go to work. You have to, I was in school. I had to go, you know, I have to, you have to keep marching on. Yeah. You got to keep going with life. But yeah, me and my older sister are close as well. We just, I think everybody is affected you, differently. You grew up in this area in Roseville, Sacramento? Sacramento. Area? Yeah. South Sac. Uh huh. I grew up like in the hood. <laughs> what, what high school did you go to? I went to Folsom. So that was kind of a culture shock for me. Because oh, I grew up, I was supposed to go to like Luther Burbank over there. Oh, Burbank, yeah, yeah, foreign. yeah. My dad lived right behind Bur Luther Burbank. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay. And then my I mom, have family that goes there, really? Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my whole family lived out there, and like friends and everything. And then, um, 
yeah, my mom actually moved to Folsom when I went to middle school. So, so I started middle school in Folsom. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Oh yeah. That is a huge difference. Oh my gosh. You I go actually got made fun of Folsom is, is huge. Yeah. I got made fun of like people called me a hood rat. I mean, yeah, you look at me now and you're like, what, yeah. <laughs> you know, but like it wasn't because I was trying to act hood or do anything like that. It was just the style and the way that people carry themselves is much different out yeah, and the way you the talk culture. and everything is very different yeah you can tell too right away like yeah these motherfuckers. absolutely that's how it was for me in a way like for me i i don't i've, I've they were always i was always told like i was like hood or something mm -hmm. because the way i talk or the way i, I right. just the way i look it's just crazy the way i look like oh shit this guy right but, um yeah i always like i posted that on my ig story yesterday i like going walking in public and people look at me like intimidated and then i'm like hello and the nicest person they're kind of like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's like one of my favorite things to do i love that yeah that's crazy damn so uh that's your why that's how you mm -hmm. got into law enforcement everything into all that what is your mm -hmm. goal with um body by missy which is your personal training brand right body yeah by missy. Mm -hmm. body by missy yeah. uh what is your goal what is where's missy gonna do in five years from now what is where, where are you gonna be where are you gonna, where, i've been thinking that. a lot about that to be honest because i looked back when i started body by missy and i did i had no idea it was gonna like turn into what it is today mm. i had no idea and it's growing even bigger like i have booty bands and resistance bands that are like on their way right now um, my own brand that I've created, you know, all this stuff. And like, I mean, I've had over 150 online clients. I'm maxed out on in-person clients because of my other job. It's just crazy. So I start thinking, okay, how can I keep this going? Working 40 plus hours a week in law yeah. enforcement and then Shit. working like 10 to 20 hours a week on top of that personal training. Like it's exhausting. You know, I go straight. I sometimes don't get home from from both jobs until 9 p.m. at night and I've been gone since six in the morning grinding right and I love that grind like I'm addicted to the grind like I the won't good thing is you don't got no kids so no you're good and that's why I'm like that's my goal is I would like kids in like three to five years so I'm really trying to set myself up for that and I know nothing you know is perfect but I'm a huge goal setter so I mean I guess back to your question where do I see body by missing in five years um I mean gosh it's crazy I never would have even thought I'd own my own business ever so, I mean, my goal would be to honestly be doing that full time. And mm -hmm. that's something I've been struggling with because I've worked so hard to get into law enforcement and I actually love what I do. And I think I'm pretty good at it, not to toot my own horn, but like, I feel like I'm decent at it. I, I'm not ready to give it up. And I don't know if I ever will be. So maybe doing something like what I'm doing in law enforcement part time and then personal training part time or more full time, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I would love to... I mean, it'd be really, really cool to either own my own gym, like partnership maybe with the guy that I train out of his gym because it's a personal training only gym, or it would be really cool to really just, um, you know, e explode my business somehow. I don't know. I'm, I've been really, I've been exploring that because I don't want to just train out of a gym the rest of my life, like, because that limits you. And I, I don't like, I don't like to, um, limits. yeah, I don't like to have limits. No. <laughs> I like to break the rules and do all that. So for me, it's like, okay, so let's say you train personal full time, you know, 40 hours a week or more. Well, you limit yourself with your clients, you know, so that you limit yourself to an income. So I want to try to set myself up so I don't limit myself to an income. So the opportunities are endless. So whether I sell a product, so like maybe workout equipment, like I've been doing booty bands, resistance bands, something like that, or even supplements down the line, maybe like natural supplements or something. Um, I don't know. I've been exploring it. Wow. You got options for show though. It's crazy. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's crazy to me because I've been like slowly talking to my parents about like my business and they're so proud of me, but you know, I was raised, you work a nine to five, you have a good retirement, you do that. I was never raised to, you know, nobody I know in my fam immediate family has ever owned their own business mm. and done this. And so it's like, when I tell That's my mom, really like I want to work full time in, <clears throat> in, you know, personal training and my business is boom. And she's, you know, it's not that she doubts me, but she's like, oh, well, you know, yeah. I mean, she's like, Oh, but your retirement, you're this. I'm like, yeah, I know all that. I know. Like, and that's why I haven't made that leap yet. I know that right now, if I, if let's just say I quit my law enforcement job and went full force with this, I know I'd be successful because that's just how I operate. I won't settle for anything less. I'd, I'd work, you know, 17 hour days, 18 hour days if I had to, to be yeah. successful. So it's not about that. But it's just about setting myself up long term for success, you know? Yeah.
So and having a plan, but yeah, it's, it, you know, when I tell my friends, you know, this is what I want to do about, they're like, wow, that's awesome. You know, it's like, but it, it's this foreign thing. Like I don't have any, I mean, I'm starting to like surround myself with friends and like-minded people like you and other people that do own their own businesses. And it shows me it's possible. Yeah, it is. Possible. I know it's possible. You just have to have the guts to follow through. You got to do it. Yep. You got to do it. And, you, and I tell people this all the time. If you're like, oh, what about retirement? Shit, you can retire yourself. Exactly. And if you love what, and if you love what you do, that's yeah. what matters. I mean, yeah. really money's not, money is, you know, obviously it is everything and it isn't everything. Mm. I don't know. It helps. Yeah. It helps. My goal, I just want to be happy. Yeah. I want to be at peace, you know? Very true. Um, how would you, t what would you tell a, a young teenage girl that dealt with that, that's dealing with something similar? Like maybe their father or mother or someone got murdered and they're dealing with that right now. What, what would you tell them to get by during those times? I mean, what would you tell them? That, you know, I don't want to tell them it'll get easier because people always say it'll get easier. I don't really believe that after going through it. I don't think it gets easier. I think you get stronger. And I would just say, take it one day at a time and find something healthy that will occupy your time. I don't want to say like replace that person or that item or whatever that you've had taken, but find something healthy to occupy some of your time so you're not stuck in your own thoughts yeah like don't don't let the enemy win yeah because when you sit there you can easily just fucking shoot all the way down exactly yeah you know and the way i look at it is like if i if i'm feeling down or whatever like i'm letting that person win or i'm letting like the and i always call it the enemy i'm letting the enemy win yeah you know like so i want to win <laughs> that's a good name for him. <laughs> you know yeah that's good what would you if you can name this podcast something the the title what would you name it oh my gosh <laughs> by missy missy no. what would you name it what i know I'm, I'm i'm just giving you an idea what would you name it resilience resilience that's my favorite word okay i like it i like it all right i'm gonna ask you random questions now oh gosh you ready okay. for random questions all right fire all right. away first thing that pops up don't think about it too much favorite restaurant insect Oh, snaps. Right away. Don't think you think okay. it too much. Okay, okay. You think it too much. It's got to be instant. All right. El, oh. El Tapatio off Sunrise. El Tapatio. El Tapatio. El Tapatio. Mm. tapatio their margaritas, sunrise. their happy hour. Why Ooh. does that sound familiar? But then I can't picture it. Because it's bomb. El Tapatio. El Tapatio. Oh, it's like authentic. El it used to be El Torito, right? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's like it authentic. Me they have um, mo mocajete. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Molcajete, oh yeah. my gosh, they have the best molcajete they I've ever had. They do the Sunday brunch thing. Oh yeah, bottomless mimosas. Yeah, hey. they, they got that from <laughs> El Torito. El to I don't remember El Torito like uh -uh. Arden. I think that one on Sunrise is, it used to be El Torito. Really? Yeah, yeah. My aunt used to work there. I had a lot of so family. good. And uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I've been to the brunch. It is good. It oh is my gosh, good. and their yeah, their margaritas are fire. <laughs> Never had a margarita there, but. Mm. I have I have been there. That's why I was like, it sounds familiar, but I couldn't even picture it. I love Mex like authentic Mexican food. Like, get me a taco truck. Mm, I'm good. Yeah, <laughs> have, uh, I got some spots for you. Oh, I'm down. Uh, <laughs> and they're in the hood, aren't they? Yes, yeah, because the, the best Mexican food is in the hood. And they're outside. <laughs> outside. I don't care. I'll eat in a yeah, parking lot. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Um, tell me something about Missy. Not a lot of people know. Um, I have broken my nose twice. <laughs> Snowboarding. Once snowboarding, yes. The I other figured. basketball. Man, I should have guessed them. Right. I should have guessed because those are the two things you love. I know. I, I'm a, I was a little distracted. three with boxing. I know. My mom <laughs> always says that. She's like, I was like the high insurance kid. I'm always breaking things, hurting myself. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, don't make it three. Uh, anything you want to add to this? Anything you want to say? Anything? I mean, I don't know. This has actually been really cool. You can say anything right now. Anything you want to say. I have no idea. I mean, I just... Um, you know, what I can tell people is that, uh, you know, life has thrown me definitely some unexpected things, but that's life. Like it throws everybody yeah. unexpected things and you're going to have your ups and downs. So just really appreciate your ups, like oh. hold your loved ones close to you. Tell your parents you love them. Tell your kids you love them. Like don't let those opportunities pass you by because life's too short. Yep. Tight. Well, I'm going to say something. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, sharing your all that. That's huge. And yeah. thank you for coming here and thank you for always being uh you know so so dope i mean you always Thanks. shine us out you always showing love all oh, that yeah. is huge i mean showing love little little things like that means so much you know what i mean so definitely 
you've definitely done that and I appreciate you. So thank you and thank you for being a part of the gym. That's of what course. I mean. That's what I add to it. How can we stay in touch with Missy? How can we connect with you? Um, well, I have my my personal training Instagram, Body by Missy Training, and it's Missy with an I, M I S S I, um, and then my other Instagram is Miss A B M I S S A Y Y Y B. I mean, yeah, just hit me up. <laughs> y Y Y three Y's. Three Y's, Miss A. Miss A, that's the flooring in her. That's that <laughs> flooring garden. It's not playing. All right. Um, thank you for being on here. Um, Thanks for having me. No, no problem. Appreciate you. It's cool. Uh, And we out.